podcast of Consuming Fire Ministries International, where I am the host, pastor, and founder and servant leader, Apostle Jarvis Hines. I want to welcome you once again to another live broadcast, for truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And as Consuming Fire Ministries International, we believe that the fire purifies and that the Word of God makes alive. I'm glad you could join us this morning. You could have been at any other service, but you decide to join us virtually. Some churches have gone back into the building. We will eventually be going back, but as of right now, we're still doing virtual recordings. So we want to welcome all of you. I want to say good morning to our CFMI and my family that's watching us through our virtual services and to all of our covenant partners. We want to say we thank God for you, for your prayers and for your financial support. I am excited about what God is going to do today because there is a word from the Lord. But before I get into the word, just a couple of announcements today. Today is the first Sunday and on the first Sunday, we will be having communion uh, at the end of the message today. We will be having communion after altar call. So if you have your sacraments at home, such as your wafer and, and your juice, we're going to ask you to join us for communion today. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm excited for what God is doing with Consuming Fire Ministries. And with that, I have a couple of brief announcements before we uh, get into the word uh, this morning. Once again... Uh, if you have been a blessing to us and those of you who want to continue to support us financially, we appreciate what you do for us. We don't take it for granted. It helps us to advance the gospel, to help the homeless, to help feed the clothes and do all the work that we have to do. So there are ways that you can be a blessing to us financially. One of the ways is that if you have the Zelle app, you can download the Zelle app from your Google or Apple Play Store and you can punch in the number. My wife will have all of the, the uh, information on at the end of the broadcast. But you can also just punch in that number, 323-359-6200. That goes directly into the uh, church's information. So you could be a blessing to us that way. Or if you want to be a blessing to me as a person, and I'm grateful for whatever you do, uh, one of the methods is I do still have cash out. You can, you, can, you can punch in the dollar sign, Apostle 2775. That is Apostle, the dollar sign, Apostle 2775. So that would be one of the cash outs. And I'm also on Venmo. You want to be a blessing to me on Venmo, that is Apostle-1975. Any of those methods will be a blessing to us. And if you want to reach out to us, you can hit me up on my email address. That is cfmi.jhines at gmail.com. Those are ways that you can give to us financially to help us to advance and enhance the gospel. For those of you who do so much to us, we pray a hundredfold return back to you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Also, every Thursday morning now, we do have a new uh, recording, a new broadcast called the Fiery Furnace Broadcast. Every Thursday morning at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time, I'm a part of a network called DMV Powered Gospel Radio Network. The show goes internationally around the world. If you want to join us on that way or be a blessing to the show, you can go to our webpage. It's www.dmvpoweredgospelradio.net. You can go on and click onto my link and let us know how much you love the show. And if you have prayer requests, you can leave me prayer requests. I do pray over them. So please let me know what it is that we stand in agreement with you for on the network. And also, if you want to go back and hear to a pre-recording of the show that you may have missed live, you can go to https colon slash slash dmvpoweredgospel.airtime.pro. It will go back and catch the last show that I did. So if you missed it and you were not able to listen to it, you can go there and catch it. Or if you want to catch up on the live recording, you can call in at area code 206-806-9770. That is 206-806-9770. Um, anyway, you will be able to hear us on that and be a blessing to us every Thursday morning. The Fiery Furnace broadcast, I'll do the teaching and everything on there like that. So I pray that you join us so you can be blessed for what it is you need God to do. Amen. And for my YouTubers, I'm starting to get into this social media thing now that I used to. So I'm getting into that now. So if you want to be a part of that, you go to my, my page now, Apostle Jarvis Hines. That's on YouTube. I do have a YouTube page. So this service today will be uploaded. So if you missed it, you can go on my YouTube page and catch it as well. Amen. Glory be to God. Uh, with that being said, I'm getting ready to get into the Word of God. But before I do, 
And before we pray, I just want to give a shout out to my assistant pastor last week, uh, Pastor Dr. Susan Flores. She did a great job last week. And one thing about me as an apostle of God, it's my job to raise up other people. Sometimes as preachers, we want to do all the preaching and all the teaching, and that's not how ministry works. Ministry works as a body. You help empower other people and not just yourself. And so I believe that I'm in a time in my life where I'm raising up people to become what God wants them to do. So what I want to say, she did a great job last week. She brought a powerful word from the Lord. And so I am excited about what God did through her. And so I'm getting ready to get into the word this morning. Glory be to God. So if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, if you can uh, meet me in the book, the New Testament book in the epistle of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Uh, and I'll be reading verses 9 through 12. That is Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter book. Philippians. Colossians chapter 1. Verses 9 through 12. I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. And you can read with me on your phones, your tablets, whatever type of manuscript you may have. You can read along with me. And uh, I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Glory be to God. So. You can read along with me whatever translation that you may have. Glory to God. And it reads, Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. And the Bible records this intelligence. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. So that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. To please him in all respects. Mm -hmm. Bearing fruit in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Strengthened with all power. According to his glorious might. For the attaining of all steadfastness and patience. Joyously, in verse 12, our concluding verse, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I stand before this be your people today, Father, I crucify my flesh. I bring myself under total subjection. Sit me down, but stand your word up in me. Anoint these lips of clay one more time for your glory. And I pray, O oh God, that those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And God, every person that's here today, God, meet whatever need that they may have today. Touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. And God, we will continue to bless your name and give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory be to God. I want to use for our thought as we continue in our book of Colossians, praying for the saints and servants. Praying for the saints and servants. One of the most powerful things, men and women of God, as we can do for anyone, and the greatest and the best thing you can do is pray for one another. Sometimes we pray on each other, but we don't pray for one another. There's two types of prayer. One is to actually communicate to God. And the other one is to you will take advantage of. But we're not to take advantage of. We are to pray for one another as we're going to see uh, this morning. Last week, we started off in uh, Colossians. Uh, my assistant pastor, she preached last week or she taught last week concerning Paul praying for the Colossians church and what he's doing here people of God he's praying for believers okay he's not praying for the world he's praying for those who have a relationship with the Lord and he was praying for their faith as he heard of their faith as he heard about their hope he was praying to encourage them now, I want you to see this we discovered last week that the apostle Paul here is incarcerated, which means he's imprisoned for preaching the gospel. Now, while he's in prison, he's still writing to encourage other people. Can I park a note right there? It is interesting, brother Fred, that we can be praying for people when we're going through our own stuff. But he did not let what he was going through stop him from encouraging other people. I want to say that again today. Sometimes we have stuff that's so unbearable, but if we can take the time to pray for others, 
while we're going through, God also keeps you while you're in position praying for other people. So we see Paul is in prison. Now, he's never visited this church, but he wrote a letter, and he has a minister or a servant by the name of Apophis. Apophis is one of his pastors, and he takes this letter or this epistle. Whenever you hear the word epistle, it means a letter. He takes this letter to the church to encourage them. What I want you to understand about early Christianity, they never called them Christians. They were called the way because persecution had arose against them because you had two types of uh, religious sects. You had those called Judaizers and you had those who were called Gnostics. Gnostics is where we get the Greek word Gnosis. Gnosis means intelligent or, or knowledgeable. They were persecuting people to revert them back to following traditions or the old way. So if you didn't denounce Jesus, you were either thrown in jail or you were killed. So Paul here is writing them to encourage them because he heard about their faith. He heard about them standing strong in the midst of their persecution. And I want to help somebody today. One of the hardest things for us to do is to focus when we're under attack. When we're under attack, our minds are everywhere else instead of where they should be. Sometimes you know when the devil attacks you the most is when your mind is somewhere else. You can't focus. You can't think. And Paul here is in prison, but yet he's still writing a letter to encourage them. So this morning, uh, we want to continue to pick up where he's praying. Now, it's interesting here because he's in prison himself. Do You do know most of the three quarters of the New Testament was wrote from the penitentiary, don't you? So can anybody judge anybody? If, if anybody has the legal right to judge, it's God. Paul is writing this while he's incarcerated to encourage the church. So here's what we're going to look at this morning. We're going to continue through verses 9. And through verses 12 In verses 3 through 8 as we discovered last week The apostle Paul thanked God For the spiritual blessings The Colossians had received from God The news regarding the Colossians Had been brought to him by Apophis Apophis was one of Paul's sons and pastors Who would take the letter And take it to the church to encourage them So he got this letter And he's encouraging them To continue in their faith Watch this after thanking God for what he had done for the Colossians, he then prayed for greater enrichment on their lives. After he begins Paul, uh, prayer to encourage them, Brenda, he begins now to send a letter to encourage them. He continues to send a letter to help them move Raquel forward into what they were doing. Watch this. So Paul did not pray occasionally for the Colossians because of the good news he had received concerning them. He's constantly praying because he heard about what they were doing. Last week, Dr. Susan taught, what will people be able to say about you? When you leave here, what will people be able to say about you? How did you live when you were here? How did you treat people when you were here? So Paul here is congratulating or encouraging them from the good news. And the good news in this text is talking about the gospel. So whenever you hear about the gospel, it stands for the good news. They was preaching the good news under persecution. They was preaching the good news in spite of being attacked, they were still encouraging each other. So he's writing them to continually encourage them about the good news. Watch this. He had received concerning them. He said that he ceased not praying for them. In other words, no matter what Paul was dealing with here, he did not stop praying for them. I hope somebody's getting this today. Because we'll pray when things are wrong. But when things are right, we won't get on our knees and say thank you. But when hell breaks loose, you'll call every prayer line, every conference line. And you shouldn't have to do that when things are bad. You're to always pray in spite of what the situation may be. So he's praying for them, people of God. Which suggests that we ought to pray for people at times other. Watch this. Then when they are struggling. So we're to pray for people all the time. Not when they are struggling, even when they're successful. Okay, I know I'm, like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna step on some toes today. Huh? Because a lot of people can't stand when you're successful. You ever notice huh? they don't want to deal with you when you're doing well, huh? but they're the first people to manage to come around when you're struggling. Huh? And they like to catch you huh, in your most vulnerable state. Huh? So what Paul is saying here huh, is that we're to pray for people, huh? not when they're doing good, huh? even when they are 
are struggling, we are to continue to uplift them and to pray for them. Watch this. People of God, we ought to pray for them when we receive good news regarding them. So whenever we hear something good about them, we need to continue to encourage and to pray for them. Watch this, uh, which brings us to point number one this morning. Uh, point number one deals with the knowledge of the will of God. Uh, the knowledge. Verse 9 in our text says this here. Uh, For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, uh, we have not ceased to pray for you uh, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Now, when Paul's talking about knowledge here, he's not talking about human knowledge. And I'm going to park a note right there because some of us are smart humanly, but some of us don't have no common sense. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop on that. We know stuff, but there's certain stuff we just don't think about. So Paul is saying, God, I want you to have just human wisdom. Because it's human wisdom sometimes, if I can be honest, gets us in trouble. Because we think we know too much. And that's what gets us in trouble. So he's not praying here for, for, for physical knowledge, okay? He's praying for spiritual understanding. Let's look at it. He says this here. Our best prayers are those that seek knowledge of the will of God. The, our best prayer, Sister Brenda, is when we're praying to know God's will and knowledge for our lives. Sometimes we want to ask and we want to do stuff, but do you ask God if it's in his will for you to do this? Let me let me park right there. Sometimes we have so many dreams. I know I did. Growing up, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I wanted to be a part of this. I wanted to be a part of that. But I never asked God what was his will concerning my life. Right. So Paul here is praying for the will of God to be revealed to them. Watch this. In this prayer request, people of God, Paul is saying this here. Paul was acknowledging the fact that God has a plan for every life. God has a plan for your life. No matter how wrecked up, tore up from the flow up your life may be, God has a plan for your life. And sometimes, Fred, the things that we planned, you know, when we were younger, we didn't think life would go this way. But God had all Always had a plan, Tiana, for your life and what he wants to do with you, Nikki, and for you and through you. So watch what he says here. He says, a person who is not fulfilling God's plan for his or her life is guilty of sin. Why? Because sin is missing the mark of God's known will and character. Sin here, and I know the church like to beat people up with the word sin. But let me give you a clarification of what the word sin means. Sin is a Greek word called hamartano. It means to miss the mark or come short of the glory of God. Everybody in this room that missed the mark. Can I be honest with you, you miss the mark every day. Even when you're not trying to miss the mark, you fall short. Let me tell you how you fall short. I'm going to try to do better today. And when you say you try to do better, you end up doing worse today than you did yesterday. You miss the mark, but that's okay. Because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Which simply means you're going to make a mistake again. But when you make a mistake, that's when you have the grace of God that can put you back in line so you can head towards the right place or you can hit the mark and the mark that he's suggesting here is Christ watch this he uses the word knowledge it is a Greek word called espinosco espinosco rather in this verse it is a word which means to know thoroughly or completely it's a word that means to know or to know thoroughly or completely right watch this it means to know intensely it means to recognize a thing to be what it really is. In other words, what he's saying here, Brother Darren, it is suggested, watch this, it means, this here, Sister Sabrina, it means this here, this word does not mean intellectual knowledge. It suggests spiritual knowledge. He's not talking about learning the things of the world. He's talking about spiritual knowledge. What is spiritual knowledge? To know what God wants for you and not what you want for you. Can I tell you why? Because when God knows what he wants for you, you will make a better decision knowing what God wants than what you want. Can I, can I be honest? No, y'all, I know how y'all looking at me. I'm going to do y'all like I do at home. How y'all looking at me? I'm going to look at y'all how y'all looking at me. Because many people think they know what they want and then when they get in it, they want to get out. But it's too late because that's what you wanted to do. But was that what God 
had for you to do. Can I just say that I made many mistakes? Uh, I wanted to do this. And God said, no. Uh, I wanted to be like this. He said, no. Uh, but I had to get to the place uh, what God wanted for me. Uh, and that's why you need spiritual knowledge. Why? Uh, because spiritual knowledge comes from the Holy Spirit of God uh, to lead you down the path that he has for you. So it is to know intently or to have spiritual knowledge concerning God's will. There's a lot of books that have been written. One of the books that I read when I was the earlier believer was by a pastor named Rick Warren. It was called The Purpose Driven Life. Everybody wanted to know what their purpose is. And can I suggest to you, the only way you will know what God's perfect uh, 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 will is or your purpose is that you have to have a relationship with him so he can reveal to you through the spirit what it is he wants you to do because if you don't have a relationship with God you will always try to figure out what it is you've been called to do on your own can I help some of us if I'm not talking to some of y'all I know I'm talking to most of us some of us are long ranges up in here and what you mean by long ranges I'm gonna do my thing this is what I'm gonna do this is how I'm gonna set this up this is how this gonna go and every time you try to do something notice what I said you it don't work out right because it's something that you did but when you step back and say God I can't handle this I need spiritual understanding on this next move. Or when you get older, when you're young, I was teasing somebody. I think I was talking to Dez. And I said, when women are younger, I want a man that's fine. He got to have six figures. He got to have this. And then you don't hurt so much. You don't care if you got one leg or long hair or short hair. As long as he know the will of God for my life. That's all that matters to me. He can be broke too. As long as he got a career, some benefit that can help me. That's what I want. And then y'all laughing, but I'm truthful. Our standards change, brother, be the older we get. She can be fine when she's young, but she'll take you to the bank. You don't care if she's overweight. As long as she got a job and she can take care of you and understand where you're going, that's what matters. So here's what he said. Spiritual wisdom will cause you, Raquel, not to make decisions. You know when you're young, they're your friends. And when you get a certain age, you can't stand them no more. You're like, I wish I would have never met them. Because our wisdom has to come from God. Watch this. The knowledge here that Paul prays, people of God, here is not something you can get from a textbook or a college or a seminary. It only is received as God reveals himself through his word. So in other words, the only way you're going to get the understanding is unless God reveals his will to you. And how do you get to know his will? You have to read your Bible. I'm not talking about reading it when you're in trouble. I'm talking about a devotional reading that will help you understand what God's will is. You know, it's amazing to me. When I got saved, some of my friends called me and like, who's preaching now? I remember him back in the day. He wasn't nothing nice. And I will never hear from them. But when they're getting ready to go get sentenced, I need you to pray for me, man. They're about to give me three to five. Can you pray? Oh, now you want to seek my God. It was funny when you laughed at me. But now you need to understand. So what I'm trying to tell them, if you're going to understand, friend, God's will, it must be revealed to you by God. And the only way you can have that is by having a relationship with God for him to reveal his spirit spiritual wisdom and understanding to you. Yeah. Glory be to God. Watch this. Uh, he says this here is only received as God reveals it through his word. This is why Paul used the words in all spiritual. Watch this wisdom and understanding. Paul prayed that the Colossians would have an accurate knowledge of what God wanted them to do. He did not want them to just be doing something. Paul is praying for God's spiritual will to be revealed to the church. And that is one of the biggest things as a pastor, Brother Tony, that I pray for is for God's will to be revealed to each one of you. What does God want you to do? Where does God see you in the next couple of years? How are you going to be with God? Because let me tell you something. You can have have all the things that the world offer you and still not have peace. I, I got people right now that have 15 cars uh, on three homes and they're under more pressure and here you are struggling with the little you have. You're looking at what they have and they really want what you got. Why? Because you have spiritual wisdom that comes from God. And what am I saying today? If you want to know what your wisdom or what your will is for your life, begin to seek God for spiritual wisdom. And when I say spiritual, it's revealed to you from God. Can I just say this? And I feel like preaching a little bit, Sister Brenda. That's okay. Because a lot of people up in here have tried to find their own pathway to God by doing all this different 
different stuff. And life didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to turn out. But when you said one word, God help me, he began to show you what he wanted you to do. It may have taken you 10, 15, or 20 years. But now you understand what God's will is because it was revealed to you by his spirit. So that's how you're able to come to the knowledge, not to just be going through life. There are a lot of people. You ever met people like that and they don't have spiritual wisdom? One week they in this career, next day doing this, and then they're back to doing this. There's no stability because God has not revealed, spiritually does, the will for their lives. And I want to talk to you today to make sure that you know what God wants to do with you, through you, and for you. And the only way you can receive that, Rocky, is through spiritual wisdom that comes from God. Here it is. Something to stay busy. Watch this. He wanted them to be doing what God had called and gifted them to do. Paul is praying here that the people will begin to do, Fred, what God wants them to do. He's praying that now that I've been praying for your faith, now that you're doing the will of God, I'm praying for you to continue telling people about me. I'm praying that you will continue to lift Jesus up, continue to do what he's called you to do. Can I help you? There's a lot of things I wanted to do with my life, Sister Tony. I tried to do this and I tried to do that. I had no idea that I would be standing behind a podium on this day of the year preaching to some people. But God had a purpose for my life even when I didn't know what I wanted to do. But now that I understand what my purpose is because it was revealed to me spiritually, I will continue to do what God wants me to do. Let me tell you why you should continue to do what God wants you to do. Because the more you start doing for God, the more God will reveal for you to do. The less you do for him, the more you're trying to figure out what is it that he wants me to do. Because you can sit around and say, I'm supposed to be doing this, but I don't want to do this. I need to be doing this, but I don't think I got the money to do this. So I know I should be over here, but I don't think I should move right here right now. See, that's when you don't have a relationship with him. Because when you have a relationship with God, he gives you spiritually specific instructions as to what he wants you to do. And this is what Paul is praying for the church. Now that you've come into a relationship with him, you need to know what his will is for your life. And if I can suggest anything in this message today, that when you leave here, you need to ask God, what is it that you want me to do? Because there's many plans that you wrote down in your diary and your personal books that may not be what God wants you to do. He may want you to do something that doesn't make any sense because you do know he's an omniscient God, which means he's all knowing. He, it doesn't make sense sometimes the stuff that he has us to do but he will have you to do it for his purpose okay so watch this Paul continues to pray that they will continue to grow and go in their gifting and their callings on what he wanted them to do Paul prayed people of God that the Colossians would be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Uh, that word field here is a Greek word called pleroo. Pleroo is a Greek word from G4137. When I say G, that means Greek. Uh, Greek and Hebrew. You do know the Bible was written in Hebrew and in Greek, the New Testament. So he's using a word that means he wanted them to be filled or he wanted them to be complete or to carry out to the full. Paul wanted them not only to know God's will, but to be so full of God's will that they can carry out what he's calling them to do. Okay, I'm going to say it again. He wants them to have such an understanding, Sister Nikki, that they will know, Raquel, without a shadow of a doubt, what it is that I'm supposed to do. So not only am I praying for you to fulfill God's will, I'm praying that his spirit will fill you with so much wisdom that you will be able to carry out what God's will is concerning your life. Not only that, it is also translated perfect. This word suggests that Paul prayed that the will of God will saturate the thoughts, affections, purposes, and plans for the church. So he's praying not only that they will be filled, but they will be filled with God's perfect plan and will for their lives. That you do know God is perfect, don't you? We are not. Because God's perfection makes us perfect. 
perfect. I'm going to say that again. You're not perfect. None of us are. But in Christ, we are perfect. So Paul here is praying that God's perfect will be fulfilled in the life of the believer. And can I suggest to you, as I've been in ministry, as I've been consecrated as a bishop, in the firm, as an apostle, I'm in one of the highest offices in the church. And at a younger age, I've seen a lot of men who started with me are no longer preaching. Some of them have went back to the world. Some of them have shut their churches down. Some of them have gone through divorces. Some of them don't even want to talk about God anymore. But when I begin to seek God for what he wanted me to do, he allowed me to go through this so he can teach me his will for my life. And can I suggest to you today all the stuff that I wanted? I said, God, it's amazing. All my friends got nice ministries. They got doctors and lawyers. And I got Pookie and Ray Ray and June Bug. Everybody on drugs, heroin addicts, cocaine dealers. But God said, that's my will for you because they need me too. It's not always about who got this, but sometimes they can have this, and that is God's will for your life. In other words, life don't always come out the way you plan. Okay, y'all just looking at me. Let me go ahead and reverse this again. Life don't come out the way you planned it. Sometimes God will put you in people like, why am I with them? I really want to choke them out and give them a two-piece. Why am I with them? But God puts you in a position with people so he can teach you something because that's his plan for your life. And all of us know, uh, we got family members, you be like, I don't even want to claim them. I don't even want them. But they're your family members, whether you like it or not. It's God's will that way. Because can I be honest with you? It's some of the ones that we think are the worst be the ones that God will save and use for his purpose, and they'll be there. There's plenty. Okay, y'all looking at me. Let, me give, let me drop a little note before I move on. Let me come and get you, David. Uh, now, we love David, right? David was a man after God's own heart. David killed the lion. David killed the bear. David killed the lion. But y'all do know David had a homemonger issue, don't you? Yeah. You, 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 do, you do know when David died, they put a woman in the bed with him, and he didn't touch her. They said, the king is dead, don't you? See, <laughs> no, see we don't want to talk about that David, but we want to talk about the shepherd David. You see? Now, no, no, Paul, who we call Saul, the one that's writing this epistle. He was killing church people. Mm -hmm. God turned him around and he wrote half of the three quarters of the New Testament from a jail cell. So what am I saying? God has a wisdom and a purpose for everybody. Yeah? And it may not be the way you think it ought to be. Yeah? But that's what God does when he uses people who you don't think he ought to use. Glory be to God. Which brings us to the second and the last point. Working within the will of God. So now he wants them to know the will of God. Now that they know God's will, Sister Brenda, now they got to work his will. <laughs> now you got to do something. It's not enough just to know. You have to do. Watch this. Verse 10. So that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So he's saying, now that you know my will, you need to walk as if you know me. Ha, let me park right there. There's some church folks today. I don't even know if they're church folks or not. They can get in here and run around and shout and do a two-step and get in the parking lot and cuss you out. You're like, wait a minute. Didn't we just hear the same Jesus? They know his will, but they're not walking according to his will. Watch this. And not only, Sister Brenda, are they to be walking in the manner of his will, but they should be bearing fruit. Their life should be an evidence that they know God. This is why I tell people all the time in our church, you know, I can tell uh, if you know God, I'm going to tell you how you know. Uh, when you be on what is the 95 and the 15 out here and somebody cuts you off and you're ready to follow them off the exit uh, and you got a big old bumper sticker on your car. I go to such and such Baptist church. Uh, I got a fish and sticker, but you cussing and somebody else see that and be like, that's why I want to go to their church uh, because they'll assume based on what you're dealing with that you're not genuine. Uh, so your walk here should be bearing fruit Worthy of what you claim to have. Which, watch what he says here, people of God. Life is incomplete without doing the will of God. Knowing the will of God is only one part of prayer. We must do his will. So it's not enough for me to pray for you. And this is why as a prophet of God, I tell people this all the time. I'm going to pray for you, but are you, you have to follow some instructions too. And a lot of people get mad. I had a lady one time told me, you told me something that didn't come to pass. So I asked her, I said, did you do what I asked you to do? And she said, well, no. I, just, I said, no, you have to do the word if you want to see the results. I can tell you something all day, but I can tell you you're going to get a job, but hello, you got to get a 
have to put your resume out there. Uh, you got to get out and make yourself known. Uh, so there's a part that you have to play in God's will. Watch this now. Uh, so he says, Paul suggests uh, that we come to know the will of God uh, so that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Watch this. Uh, this is the only way we please God in all respects. Uh, when we walk manner or we walk worthy of who we've been called by. Uh, when we walk according to his will. When you walk according to God's will, people of God, what Paul is saying here in the text, we walk based on his word. We live based on what he said. It was Jesus that said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Now, I'm not saying that I walk the walk perfectly every day, but I strive for perfection. Now, you want to know why you have to strive for perfection and walk worthy? Because there are people that are watching you. Uh, the minute you say you are a Christian, uh, all eyes are on you. And we say, I'm not perfect. Uh, he ain't done with me yet. <laughs> yeah, I know he's not done with you yet, but you got to die to some point. Okay, you know, anybody talking to me? Because I know that's what we say. Well, you got to forgive me. God ain't done with me yet. Uh, but you done gave him your blessed assurance and then you done told him everything else. Uh, you still you got to walk worthy of your calling uh, because you don't know who is watching you. Now, let me let me just give a little story about me walking worthy. Uh, Y'all know I, I told our sister Brenda when they lived in Rancho, I used to have to always go uh, to Costco's and I have to get delivered. So, so one day I'm going to Costco's uh, and this Asian man pulls in my lot and I'm like, no, he didn't just see my light. He saw me about to turn here. So I pull up. I said, excuse me, sir. Did you see me about to get in there? And I got out my car and I heard somebody say, Apostle! If I wasn't walking worthy of my call, and I would have beat this man up, I would have been on World Star Hip Hop, Twitter, Instagram, pastor beating the man up in the parking lot. So I have to be mindful of where I am at all times. Because I don't know who, and the man's like, oh my God, you pray for me and my wife, we had the baby, everything you said. Now here I'm mad because my parking spot is taken. And this man is telling me what God did for him. See, walking worthy or the manner of your call requires of you being constant wherever you go to bear fruit for God's name. Watch this. He says this here. This is the only way that pleases God. To please God is the word ariska. Ariska means, orisco means to give pleasure. Mm -hmm. It means to bring joy. So whenever we're walking in God's manner, we're pleasing him. No matter where we go, we're pleasing God in our character, our conduct, and even in our lives. I used to have guys on the job, they just say, I've never heard you say a cuss word in all your life. And I've heard some cuss words I didn't even know was cuss words. Dealing with the public, I've been cussed out so many times, I didn't even know what kind of word that was. And people will look at me and say, man, you didn't go off. Because no, how do I know this might be the exact same person I have to witness to? So we have to walk in a way that's pleasing to God. And I know some of us be on our job, like she got one more time to come up over here today. If I didn't care about my benefit, if I didn't care about my 401k, if I didn't care about my kid, I'll bust in a head. That's what you can't do. So you have to stay in God. Well, I don't like them, friend. I don't like the way they work. They can't work with me. We don't get along. I don't know why they're trying to be my friend. We just don't get along. It doesn't matter. What matters is how you please God when you are worthy of his will for your life. I know y'all looking at me, uh, but that's the way it's got to be. Uh, we represent him wherever we go, uh, no matter where I go. And don't get me wrong, uh, I see a lot of women, uh, but I know what I got uh, because I represent God. Because what I can do can not only hinder my marriage, but it can hinder the souls that trust and believe the God in me. So I have to be mindful or care wherever I go. Watch it. He says, it, it pleases, which means you're ready to do anything to satisfy God. Are you willing, Sister Brenda, to do anything to please God? I say sometimes we got to really ask ourselves this, friend. Do we really represent God? It doesn't matter if the whole church is twerking. Do you need to twerk too? <laughs> <laughs> you know, My God. Me. It doesn't matter what they do, what you do. <laughs> Somebody got to have the standard in the crowd to be able to do God's will, to satisfy him, Tony, no matter what it takes. Watch this now. Here it is. He also suggests, not only that, the word walk suggests a condition in which one is living. It speaks of a lifestyle. How does your lifestyle reflect God's? Okay, I'll leave that one. I'll come back to that. I'll visit that for just a minute. How does your life reflect God? 
And I'm not saying, hear what I'm saying, I'm not suggesting perfection. But what I am suggesting, that there should be something about you that they can say, you know what, it's something different about him. It's something different. She don't move like everybody else. And I, I've never seen a society where we want to be like everybody else. When God called you to be you, we always talk about keep it real, keep it 100, keep it 200. I'm going to keep it 300 today. Be who you're supposed to be. Because can I be honest? When you really start being who you want to be, some of the people who don't like you will get from around you because you're being who you're supposed to be. And that's the way God intended it for them to see God's will working in your life or the lifestyle that you live. Watch this, people of God. The word worthy here is the word oxus. It speaks of a Christian walk as it should be. It talks about how we should be walking as believers. We should be living a life that reflects him no matter where we go. It should always be an example. I'm not saying, and people think the Christian life is born old. They holier than thou. And I, I used to hear that so much and I said, yes I am. Because my father is holy and so am I. Because I'd rather be holy than ho wish. Hmm? Okay, now I'm going to come back to that later. Huh? Because I want you to really see that I'm not playing. Do you know one of the reasons why people won't come to the body of Christ? It's too much hypocrisy. Too many politics. And I'm not saying people are perfect. But if you're going to stand behind a sacred desk, then you ought to have some type of example of your life. I got friends right now saying, man, I won't let my wife go to church because I might have to go down there and kill the pastor. I'll be honest with you. Because he don't reflect what he say. He can preach this. But this doesn't matter, Raquel. It's when I catch you in the streets from around your building, do your life reflect what you say? This is what Paul is suggesting here, the Christian walk. It also should be suggested, people of God, reflecting God's character and thoughts. Does my character reflect his? What is God's character? He loves everybody. God prayers and cares for everybody. Does your character reflect his people? Does your character cares for him? Do your thoughts please him? Mm -hmm. See, and this is the thing. Well, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Because he knows the heart of the mind. Okay? So watch it. Here it is. It also suggests Paul prayed that his readers would reflect the character and the thoughts of God each day they lived. Those who are worthy of the Lord are those who know and do the will of God. Those of us who live daily know God's will for their lives, friend. Every day I get up, I know what God's called me to do. God's called me to pray for this family. God's called me to stand in the gap for the laws. He's called me to help the homeless when they need it. He's called me to help the downtrodden, the brokenhearted, those that everybody threw away. Those are the ones I'm called to. I know my assignment, and I wouldn't have known my assignment if I had not gotten God's word to know God's will. So what am I saying? God knows some of you on a job that you really don't want to be on. But what if I told you today you were there for an assignment? What if I told you somebody on that job needs you there because if you was not there, they'll snap. Sometimes God puts us in places to fulfill his will to help other people. Glory be to God. Watch this. We must admit that when we know far more than we do, there are many people who know what God wants them to do, but there are a few people who have the faith and courage to do it. There are some people who know what God told them to do, and there's a few that have the courage to do it. Which suggests here, there are people that never do God's will, but they won't. Can I tell you why? I don't want everybody looking at me. I don't want everybody knowing I can do that. I just want to just sit back and mind my business so they'll leave me alone. Can I help you? God will put you on the spotlight whether you want to be put on the spotlight or not. When I first got the calling to preach the gospel, I ran for three different churches. And I had three different prophets coming up to me saying, you in the back. I'm like, I don't want to be bothered with this stuff. You're called. I'm not called to do nothing. I will go to a another church. A, a prophet will say, you in the back, stand up. You're called. When God puts the mark on you, you can't run from who you are. Let me come and get you, Jonah. God told me to go to Tosh's. I'm going to get on a cruise ship and go to Joppa. So what does God do? He troubles the water to get you. See, God will do what it takes to do for you to fulfill your will for his life. I used to tell him all the time, either you're going to serve God on your feet 
or you're going to serve him on your back. But you're going to serve him one way or the other. So this is what Paul here is suggesting as I'm preparing to come to my close. Listen to this, people of God. He says this here. Doing what God wants us to do is far more difficult than knowing it. <laughs> Doing what he wants us to do is very difficult. Because sometimes you're like, God, you want me to do that? That don't make no sense to me. Why would you want me to do that? That's why he wants you to do it. Because it doesn't make sense to you. But it makes plenty of sense to you. Because God knows you're the one that can do it. Can I tell you why some of us had to go through abusive relationships? How can you help somebody else come out if they haven't been through what you've been through? How can you tell somebody how to survive a relationship that could have blowed your mind? God allowed that to happen for you to be able to help somebody else come into the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of the will for their lives. So watch this. If we are to do the will of God, it requires us to become unselfish and self and serve. So if we're going to do God's will, we must be unselfish. We must become selfless, not selfish. You know, I ain't going to say that to them. That's my family. I don't care about everybody else. No, 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 no. And can I tell you, that's why our society is declining today. When we grew up, I don't know how they grew up wherever you grew up at, but in the South, when you cut up, everybody whooped you. And then you got one when you got home too. Because it was a village that raised a child. Now, you can't even touch a child no more. I'm telling you, when I grew up the 800 number, you would get beat down on the phone with the people calling them because they didn't care about that. See, I'm just keeping it real today. See, now kids can throw that stuff at you. Now your mama would have threw something at you if you would have said call the number and told them come get them before I kill them. Now, so it's a difference. But now we see when there's no raising and no training and no wisdom, we have a nation now that feels like they're entitled to you. You know, 13 years old, you 30, 40, they talking to you like you their homegirl. Not so. Because no accountability is selfishness and not selflessness. Glory be to God. So watch this. The Christian life is supposed to be continual, producing fruit. Your life should constantly produce fruit. You know what my goal is? It's to save or get many people saved as I possibly can. That is my goal, to help people that don't know the Lord. And it's amazing. As I come to this close, when I worked at Homeland, Lady Vanessa, there were people, there were uh, FBI agents and, and DEA agents, Sister Brenda, that wouldn't even talk to me. But when they got in trouble, uh, 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 Captain Hines, can I see you downstairs? You know, I'm having problems with my wife. Can you pray for me? I said, you, you want to pull me away from everybody to sneak for me to do this? But you couldn't tell me in purpose, uh, in person? Because that was my plan to be in that building, to help officers going out there, getting ready to go and run into houses, not knowing if they're going to come out alive. That was my purpose for being there. So I had a purpose, and that was to fulfill God's purpose and to produce fruit. Watch this, people of God. In every good work, the word fruit here means to be fertile. This fruit here, people of God, is the result of a right relationship with God. So the Brenda, when you're fertile, you're able to produce. Your life produces. And can I just park a note this? So the death, when you start producing, that's when jealousy comes. The minute God starts blessing you, people are envious. Mm -hmm. But they had the same opportunity to produce like you did. Mm -hmm. But they chose not to. You know, I told everybody when I left the hood, now you know, you know, you know black folks' word is you bougie. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to live where we would have to duck every night because there were bullets flying over our heads, so I'm bougie because I want my kids to have something better. Because I want to produce fruit that pleases my God. And whenever you please God, Fred, he will allow your life, Sister Brenda, to be a fruitful example so others can come to him. That's why he wants you to be fertile. And that's why he wants you to produce. Because he wants you to do that when you have a right relationship with God. When you have a right relationship with God and you pray for others and pray for yourself, God begins to expand your life. So what am I saying today? And I'm not talking about praying for people that don't like you. I'm talking about praying for people who can't stand you. Because sometimes God will bless you when you pray for your enemies. He says, bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despite use you and say all men are evil against you falsely for my name's sake. He said rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. So let your haters hate. Let them lie, let them lie and gossip on you. That's free promotion. So people who didn't know you, now they know you. So let your life be a production of fruit. That's how you do God's will. You continue to keep moving in spite of what I care how they feel about you. 
or what they say about you. Because sometimes if the truth be told, the people, Sister Nikki and Sister Tyler, talk about us, are the people who really want to be like you. Okay. Talk to yourself about it. Talk to yourself. That's what you got to do sometimes, Sister Tony. People can say things and come against you because they want to be like you. But that shouldn't reflect you from producing fruit. And as I come to this close, here it is. If there's to be fruit bearing, there must first be the increase in the knowledge of God. If your life is going to be fruitful, you must first have a relationship with God. How do you get that relationship? Not by just confessing him, learning about who he is. I tell people all the time, you don't believe me? Pick up the book. Read it for yourself. And that is one of the reasons why the church is, is, is going down. I, I was sharing with a bunch of uh, older bishops because I was the youngest bishop of apostle to get consecrated. I said, you know why our generation don't come to church? Because y'all talking about stuff that happened back in 1930 and 40, and this is 2021. Time has super speeded. And if you're going to relate to our generation, sometimes you've got to get down in the trenches with them mm -hmm. and go out there and let them know what time it is or learn what they're doing instead of beating them. If you're going to beat them, you're going to run them away. But if you get down with them and let them know I'm here, then you will begin to see what it is God wants them to do. So we have to learn by showing them how they're to be fruitful and how to know the knowledge of God. This means the Christian never knows all he or she can know. That's why you got to get around people to learn some stuff that you don't know. That's why Paul said, I become all things to all men. Now, becoming all things does not suggest that I be like them, but I be like them till I win them. I have to be like you to get to know you so I can tell you about who you are. You can't get to know me and do what I do and then try to tell me what I'm doing is wrong. I'm going to talk to y'all over here. Because what happens is when you don't do that, it shows hypocrisy. You're telling me this, but you're doing what I'm doing. But when I'm telling you what not to do and I'm living a life contrary to what you do, that draws you in. Because you see that I'm genuine with my witness, okay? So it suggests there's always room for growth. We experience spiritual growth through our increased knowledge of God. Again, the word knowledge means to know thoroughly or completely. When we come to have a real relationship with God and we know him completely, it does not mean we know him intellectually, but it means we know him spiritually. It means that I just don't know him in my head. I know him through the life that I live. And can I suggest to you today as I close, it's not enough to have a head knowledge of God. Jesus said it best. Even demons know who God is. We got more people in church that's demon possessed than people that don't know God. And can quote the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But their life don't reflect it. When you really need a person that know God, can I just suggest this and I'm going to sit down and get ready to do what we got to do? When you really know God, you don't have to say you know God. Oh, yeah, I'm going to say that. When you know God, your life reflects it. You can be on the job just doing your job. And everybody else who be saying they know God be the, the loudest one that talk about, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Be the one to cuss you out before the, <laughs> oh, Lord, let me tell you. And ladies go to church, huh? mother, missionary, evangelist, huh? prophetess, and will cuss you out. And I'm sitting there like, really? Are you supposed to be an evangelist? And then when they find out I'm an apostle, oh, no, 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 keep doing what you're doing. Because that's who you really are. Don't be faking around us and then get around the church folk that want to run and tear up the aisle and just as messy or as we say, nasty. <laughs> you can't do that. Your life should reflect that of God. And if you didn't get anything of what I said today, knowing God is more than knowing him in your head. It's knowing him in your heart. Mm -hmm. And it's knowing him by the life that you are to live. Paul encouraged the church to get to know God's will. Because once you know God's will for your life, he will begin to produce the fruit in your life that will show evidence that you really know him. I am done. So I'm going to pick back up on this next week because I, I, I have to park right here sometimes. Some days it's like, uh, you know, ouch, did he say that today? It's like the golden corral. You know, we want the sweet stuff, the fat stuff. We don't want that stuff that's good for you. We want the vegetables. I, I don't want that today. Well, you're going to get some of that too. And then some. So we got to make sure that you know who Christ is. One of the things that I prepared for off the call that, that concerned me um, 
And my dad used to tell me this story um, when he was in the country. He said this little young country boy used to sit in the streets and the uh, pastor would say, uh, the little boy, the pastor would walk by the little boy's house and one Sunday the little boy say, hey preacher man, why you go to church with all them hypocrites and sinners? He said, young man, <laughs> I'd rather be in church with some of them than to be in hell with all of them. I say, your job got hypocrites, but you go get your check, don't you? Sure do. The club got hypocrites, but you still back it up, don't you? You still have your feet. All that stuff. In the name of Jesus, that's all I'm going to say. In Jesus died for my life. Pray for me, Jesus. No, stretch your hands first. Stretch your hands, Jesus. But I'm just, oh, she's joking. But on the real, that's what I'm talking about. We have to be mindful. Or how we pretend to be something that we're not because the world is watching and waiting for the manifestation of the real church. People are waiting. I had an uncle who wouldn't step in church for years after what he saw happened as a little boy. He walked in and saw something he wasn't supposed to see and it discouraged him concerning a pastor. And the first thing I told him when I got a call, he told me, he said in his walking chair, he said, if you're going to be a pastor, be a real one. That's what he told me. And I said, I will not go there. And I've had friends who can preach the wall, paint off this wall, but they got their lifestyle something else. I can't live like that. If I can't be real, I'll sit my own self down. That's how I feel about it. I'd rather respect you and respect the anointing than to cause you to stumble away from God because of my actions. And this is what Paul was suggesting. Keep going forward. Keep learning more about him. Keep growing in the wisdom. And when the more you grow in the wisdom, you know you know God's will. And for those of you who are watching me, to know God's will is to first to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And if you have not done that, I want to introduce Christ to you today. I'm asking you to come behind your computers, behind your cell phones. If you're watching me on Facebook Live, YouTube, or any uh, social media stream, I need you to just raise your hands with me and repeat after me today. After you've heard this word, Paul was praying for the saints, which means he was praying for the believers. And he was also praying for those believers who were servants. So I want you to raise your hand behind me wherever you are and you repeat these words after me. Father, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. After hearing your word today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Mm -hmm. And not only do I believe he arose, but he got up on the third day with all power in his hand. And now, Heavenly Father, he is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. So today, I confess, I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. Today, come into my life and be my Lord and be my God. I believe and I receive this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, according to Romans 10 and 9, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And for those of you who have accepted Jesus, I want to welcome you to the family of faith. But I don't want you to stop there. You need to find a Bible teaching, preaching ministry that will teach you the Holy Writ or the Word of God so you can grow in your relationship. You need the apostles, the apostolos, the messenger, the ambassador. You need the prophet, the prophetes, the mouthpiece. And you need the evangelist who preaches the life, the death, the burial and resurrection. The pastor, the poem, and the shepherd who protects you from the wolves and all the things of this world. And also, we need the teachers that help you grow in your relationship with Christ. And if you've done that, please send me an email at cfmi.jhines at gmail.com to let me know that you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. We want to welcome you to the family of faith and that you continue to grow in the wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this time, we're going to prepare for communion. For those of you that have your sacraments at home, if you can just meet me in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, you just meet me in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. That we can go ahead and, and commune together. If you have your Bibles, meet me in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I will start reading at verse 27. And then we will all come together. Start at 23 and we'll commune together. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 reads, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread or drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep, which means many die. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Verse 33. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, at least you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come let me give us a perfect example. You know, the old church used to tell us, if your soul ain't right, you shouldn't take communion. Would that be the case? Ain't none of our souls right. <laughs> that was the purpose of Jesus dying, so we could take it. So the, the, when we don't take it, we don't acknowledge what he's done for us. So that's the erroneous teaching about your soul got to be right. There's, the Bible says there's no person right, no, not one. So Jesus paid a price for you and I to take it. So you have the right to take it. Of the, uh, of the communion And what he was also saying there is that many people This was instituted in Exodus The night God delivered the children of Israel Out of Egypt He had a meal To commemorate the night that he released them Out of bondage And so this is the meal that Jesus is going to take with us again That's the same night he said One of you at the table will betray me And they said who is it I? I? And Jesus went to Judas And he said whatever you're about to do do it quickly and Judas, by the time he took it, he hung himself because he realized he had betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. He couldn't take it back. He hung himself. And that field that he purchased is called the field of Akinodema, which means the field of blood to this day. But you and I are worthy to take it because that's the reason why he died, to pay your sin debt in full. So no one has the right to judge you. No one has the legalistic right to condemn you. The only person that has the right to judge anybody is him. Mm -hmm. That's why we have access to commune. Amen. Let me pray. We're going to go ahead and commune. Father, as we come together as a body today to commune, Father, we ask you to bless the bread which represents your body that was beaten, battered, bruised for our sins, our transgressions, our lawlessness, O oh God, that by your stripes we have been healed, O oh God. We ask you to bless the fruit of the vine which represents the shedding of your blood. For your word declares without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission for sins. Not by the bulls of bulls and animals and birds, but your blood that's eternal has cleansed us and given us eternal life. Now we bless the bread and the wine that we come in with you, sanctify it, edify it, and may you receive glory for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's look at verse 23. Verse 23, he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And then give it thank you, break it. I don't know if some of y'all bread might be saggy because uh, this, this Vegas weather was hot. And we had to put it on ice. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, it was hot. So, and he says, after he said break the bread, he said, take, eat. This is my body. He said, take it to eat, which is broken for me. Everybody eat. Yeah. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. Saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand praise. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Well, that concludes our service. I want to thank all of our CFMI family. We love you. We're praying for you. May God's blessings and favor be upon you as I do the benediction. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his confidence upon you and may the Lord give you peace. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.